Hello, my name is Bradley Gibbons and today we're at the beautiful Royal Berkshire Fisheries. Uh, we're fishing on Lake One here at Royal Berkshire uh, and the main target today is going to be fishing for winter silvers on commercials. It's something a lot of people can get fooled by and sometimes see a little bit daunting because a lot of commercials all summer you're just fishing for carp. Come the winter months there's so many other fish in these lakes and it's just how to target them. Today we're going to be doing a couple of different tactics, we're going to be fishing a waggler and a pole just for two main tactics I would use when targeting silvers on commercials this time of year. We're going to be going into the baits that I use, the rigs I use and a few other bits that will hopefully help you when you go to your commercial and uh, get you into catching some nice bags of silvers. Right, so my first line today is going to be my waggler line. I'm fishing this right tight against the far bank. On this lake we've got some lovely like overhanging bushes, dead trees, stuff like that to fish against. The whole thing with silvers this time of year, the water's colder, the colour's dropping out of the lake, so the fish find all these little nooks and crannies against the far bank and any bit of undergrowth or overgrowth shall we say, uh, they'll get under it. So the best thing to do like with roach is get right tight, as close to it as you can get and often you single out the bigger fish doing that. So my main reason I'm starting on a waggler is because we are going to be fishing a pole later on but they usually take a little bit more time to settle on the pole line. You're trying to get the fish a little bit closer. So if I fish a waggler early doors, hopefully pick off some nice big roach, that should be a good start to the day. Uh, so my waggler set up today, I'm using an 11 foot MVR rod. It's a nice soft action rod, very forgiving, very important when you're fishing for silverfish fish on commercials. These fish get fished for all year, they don't have necessarily very hard mouths so you want a light rod that doesn't actually pull the fish too much because otherwise you'll be pu pulling the hooks out of them. Main line, I've got a three pound main line on this, a very light main line. This again very important because we're going to be fishing light wagglers or as light as we physically can on the day depending on the wind. You want as light a line as you can. This enables you to cast more, more accurately and also gives you a nicer cast so you're not punching it quite as hard. Uh, down to the business end, we're looking at the actual waggler. I've got a 3 gram loaded waggler. I personally, I'm a big fan of loaded wagglers. Uh, main reason I think they fly better, I think they land better. It's just per personal opinion a lot of the time. But all I do on mine is I have a standard float stop just above the waggler and then a single snappling swivel below. Uh, and then I have a little bit of shot underneath. So these are MV Maver MVR split shot, soft shot. Uh, I've got three number fours and three number sixes below. Same thing again, little things like this, very important, keeping all your shot as well below the, below the waggler, it just enables your cast to be that little bit more accurate, makes it a lot easier. It's the main reason I put a float stop above my waggler as well instead of a shot. I personally just think that gives me a bit more finesse when I'm chucking my waggler out. Uh, now we come down to the actual business end, so to speak, the hook. I use an 18 silverfish pellet hook. Uh, when you're fishing a waggler, you've got to remember I'm fishing maybe 30 metres today. So you're striking through 30 metres line, you don't want a tiny hook. If you use a tiny hook, likelihood is you're going to miss quite a lot of bites, you're going to lose some fish, maybe bump a few off, even with a soft rod. So I use an 18 a lot of the time. Silverfish pellet hook, just with a single maggot on, and that seems to do the business. Use one number eight dropper coming down the line, uh, and that's about it really. That's my waggler setter. In terms of feeding on the waggler, uh, today we're going to keep it nice and simple. You're going to have two baits on the waggler, you're going to have maggots and you're going to have hemp. So they both do two different things in my eyes. So the maggots, that's what I'm going to be using on the hook today. Brilliant winter roach bait and perch, skimmers, etc. Whatever we're fishing for. 
but the maggot, that keeps everything going in and you've got your hook bait in going in with feed as well. The hemp, however, I try and feed more quantity of hemp at the start of my day. By feeding more quantity of hemp at the start, it's a heavier bait, you can get it out there a bit easier and you create a better bait on the bottom. For these big roaches, it's really important to have a better bait because if I want to be catching them for a few hours or throughout a whole day, and I want a lot of bait on the bottom, a lot of stuff for them to graze over, that's very important. So it, sometimes, a lot of the time, I will feed a lot of hemp at the start of the day, and then come the end of the day, I will literally just be feeding maggots. So that's pretty much my waggler setup. That's how we're going to be attacking it. So we'll uh, go from there, really, and uh, just move on to the pole line a little bit later. Right, so we've had a brilliant start of the day, fishing a waggler, had some beautiful roach, up to a good, probably up to a pound mark, I'd say. It's a stunning fish for this time of year. Uh, it's been a good start. I wouldn't even say it's tailed off. We could probably catch on it all day if we wanted to. But as I said, at the start of the day, I have, had, I have primed my pole line. What I've done on my pole line today is I've fed a mix of dynamite black roach and dynamite milled expanders. Sounds a bit of a weird mix, to be fair, because you're feeding milled expanders trying to catch roach. But my view on it is we're fishing on a commercial fishery. Uh, pretty much all they get fed all summer and all winter still is pellets. Uh, so eventually the roach are going to eat all the pellets. So I like to feed what the fish eat. And uh, what I like to do is fish a dynamite roach mix, 50-50, with the milled expanders. Milled expanders adds a fluffiness to the mix. It's a lot, much lighter mix when you add this. And the good thing with milled expanders is it does take on a heck of a lot of water. So you can add loads of water to it, make it quite damp, and it's still fluffy, which is uh, what you want at the end of the day. What, as I said, I do mix my ground bait damp, so I mix it up very damp, then I push it through a riddle rather than sieving it through a riddle. The reason I push it through is because we're on a shallow lake, I don't necessarily want to feed balls of ground bait. Uh, we're only fishing in three foot of water, so how I like to do it is I mix all my bait all in loose, then just scoop a cup for winner at a time. So I feed all my ground bait loose when I'm on shallow venues, fishing for silvers especially. Uh, so that's why you need to mix it out a little bit damper, because if you mix it dry and you try and cup it in loose, it's going to go everywhere. It's going to go for all the different layers of the water. I mix it so it's quite almost claggy in a sense, and I know that when I feed that, it's going to sink down and get almost plume out at the bottom. It's going to cover a nice area. So that's my ground bait mix. Like I said, I use two bags. You don't have to. You could come here today and I reckon you could just feed one bag of milled expanders because, like I said, that's what they eat is pellets. Or you could come here today and use a bag of dynamite roach, uh, whichever one you fancy, really. In my mix today, I'm literally just putting in uh, a handful or two handfuls of hemp and a few maggots, really. Because I'm feeding it loose, you haven't got to worry about live maggots, dead maggots, anything like that, breaking the balls up. So I put a handful of maggots in, a couple of handfuls of hemp, the hemp's doing the same as what we spoke about on the waggler earlier. The hemp is just holding the fish in your peg. Like I said earlier, we've caught roach up to a pound today. These roach, they're clever fish. You've got to try and hold them in your peg because they're not the kind of fish that's going to sit there all day over nothing waiting for you to catch them. So you've got to almost outsmart them a little bit. Uh, so that's my ground bait mix. That's the bait I'm using on the pole. Now we get to the actual rig side of it. So like I said, it is only shallow. We're looking two and a half to three foot deep. So not a lot of depth at all, but the whole thing with this, when you're fishing in shallow water, there's a few crucial things you need to do to make sure that you can keep catching throughout the day. I'd say the biggest thing in my eyes is fishing a light elastic. We're fishing in two and a half, three foot of water. If I fish a heavy elastic and every roach I hook splashes on the surface, that's going to spook, a, spook the shoal of fish. And the same thing, touching on the same thing again with the big roach, they're clever fish, and as soon as they see that splash on the surface, they're out your peg. So the best way of catching these big roach, I find, is a light elastic. This is a single five, set very soft, so it just goes back into the pole, and I've got to wet it quite a lot. And uh, when I hook a fish, there's a lot of uh, give in it. So I'd rather, when I'm fishing for silvers, take a little bit more time getting them in and uh, make sure that I'm not spooking them, and uh, that means I can catch all day, really. So that's my elastic. In terms of my main line, fishing an 012 main line, light, lightish main line, not too light, but... You don't want to go stupid light O10, otherwise it will just kink and uh, eventually it'll just keep tangling. So o 12 is like my go-to silverfish mainline. If I was fishing in deeper water, maybe five, six foot plus, then I'd go for a slightly heavier, maybe an O14 MVR mainline. 
uh, just so that you've got a bit more stability in your rig. But for these shallow waters, 012 is more than adequate. Going down to the hook length, we're using an 09 hook length, that's 09 MVR hook length mono, uh, straight down to an 18 green gamma. Brilliant hooks, brilliant uh, hook length line, uh, but yeah, main thing is using light hooks, same thing again, the roach are clever. As soon as that colour starts, color starts to drop out the water, you've got to be one step ahead of them. Uh, we've got a string of four number 10 shot, uh, spaced evenly apart, around three inches apart, going up, uh, going up the line and a couple of trimmers just to adjust my flow. Uh, the actual flow is an MVR finesse flow uh, in a 0.2 gram. Uh, so this flow, it's brilliant flow. It's, it's got a hollow bristle, but it's a very fine hollow bristle. So you can use it for this time of year for seal fish and it works perfectly. So these are the rigs I'm using. That's how I'm feeding it and uh, hopefully we're going to go out there and catch a few big roach. day here today at Royal Berkshire Fisheries. Uh, we've caught a load of roach, probably got 25, 30 pound in this net. Some absolute beautiful specimens as you can see. Even had some nice big perch as well, so can't complain, had a brilliant day. Uh, I hope today has helped you to understand a little bit of how I approach winter, winter commercials, fishing for silverfish. It's quite a universal way of approaching them, so hopefully you can apply this to your own fishery.